so let's get started. And we're going to start talking about acids and bases, pH. And here's a little joke to get you started. McAllister grinned wryly. Finally, one of the enemy's strongest bases had been completely neutralized. <laughs> bases? Anyway. Okay, so um, let's ask the question, why are lemons so sour? Well, they're sour because of this compound right here called citric acid. And citric acid is a compound consisting of six atoms of carbon, eight atoms of hydrogen, that's the white ones here, and seven atoms of oxygen. Anyway, that compound together, citric acid, makes them acidic. But what does it mean to be acidic? And that's what we're going to talk about right now. Here's some other acids you might be familiar with. Uh, vinegar is acetic acid, this compound right here. And no, you don't need to memorize the chemical formulas of uh, formulae of these compounds, just to give you an idea of some common acids that you'll find in your house. Uh, that same acetic acid that we use to make vinegar, uh, this little bad boy here, a vinegar rune, is a creepy looking insect um, from Arizona. And he sprays a defensive secretion of acetic acid, but it's a highly concentrated acetic acid that will actually burn your lungs. So yeah, acids can come in different concentrations. But what exactly is an acid? An acid is a proton donor. Now what does that mean to be a proton donor? So um, when I say proton here, it's kind of different from what we were talking about when we said protons as subatomic particles in the nucleus of the atom. A proton uh, here is just referring to a hydrogen ion. So a hydrogen that has lost one of its electric charges makes it more positive. So an acid um, donates these hydrogen ions, donates these protons to another um, solution. And that makes it an acid because it's lost some of those hydrogen ions. So um, water can actually kind of serve as, as a proton, believe or as an acid. Um, so let's take a look at these guys right here. So there's a Mickey Mouse right here. Um, and because Mickey Mouse, like you see here, imagine each of his ears is a hydrogen atom and the face is an oxygen atom. So we already talked about the structure of water. If he gives one of these ears away, one of these hydrogens, he has now become a proton donor and that makes him acidic. Now this used to play M-I-C-K-E-Y-M-O-U-S-E, -E, but it doesn't anymore for some reason. All right, so when um, one water molecule donates a hydrogen ion to another water molecule, that one that picked it up just inherited another hydrogen. So for a brief instant, he becomes H3O, which is a hydronium ion. Um, and so let's see if we can, um, actually, let me go back down here. Let's see if we can watch what just happened. Okay, so watch this little, little video right here. You can see water is donating a hydrogen ion to this one, and, and then this one in turn gives another one back. So this is what water compounds are doing in a solution. They're just constantly handing back hydrogen ions from one to another. And, uh, but notice that once a water molecule is given away one of its hydrogens, for a brief instant, it's created OH minus. That's what's called a hydroxide ion. And that is a, a base because eventually that base is going to now accept another hydrogen ion. So um, let's see if we can look at the chemical equation here of just what happened. So if you take a water molecule and a water molecule and you add them together, very briefly, one is going to donate a hydrogen to the other to make H3O and the other one that just donated the hydrogen is now left as an OH minus. So that's kind of what's going on. Water in a solution. So a, you, you kind of get this lattice structure of water and they're constantly handing these hydrogens back and forth. But same kind of thing happens with, for example, if you took HCl, which is hydrochloric acid, and you put it in water. And by the way, if you're going to mix an acid and water together, always put the acid in the water, not the other way around, or you'll get an explosion. But if we take the hydrogen from this hydrochloric acid and donate it to this water molecule, for a brief instant, we've created that hydronium ion and free chlorine because we took this H off here, gave it there, and now we have a free chlorine ion right there. So anyway, just remember that an acid is something that donates a hydronium ion. Well, then what are bases? So bases are hydrogen ion acceptors, proton acceptors. 
And so as you just saw, if you take a Mickey Mouse ear off one water molecule and give it to the other one, um, that one that just accepted that hydrogen ion is a base. So um, a hydroxide donor is a base. So if we take this OH and give it away, that makes the solution basic. Okay, so that's a hydroxide ion. So here's an example. Let's say you have this base, and this is usually a very strong base called sodium hydroxide. And if you take off the sodium ion, you're left with a positively charged sodium ion. We already talked about that kind of stuff. And a hydroxide ion, a free hydroxide ion. So this is a base because it will donate that hydroxide ion in solution. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, here's another example. If we take this compound here, this is ammonia, and we add it to water. So ammonia might be what you find in some of your cleaning materials, for example. Well, we're going to take one of these um, hydrogens off of the water, add it to the ammonia. So instead of NH3, we now have NH4 ion. And what's left behind is a hydroxide ion. And so that's a basic solution because we had a donation of a hydroxide ion. So here's some uh, household bases you might be familiar with. Uh, Clorox. Yeah, Clorox bleach. Total base. So you probably already knew strong acids can burn you, but did you know a strong base can burn you? Have you ever taken household bleach, and I don't recommend trying this at home, but you've probably experienced this before. If you take some bleach and it gets on your fingers, what happens to your fingers? That's right, they get slippery because that strong bleach has now just eaten away all the outer cells on your skin. And so now you're exposing the new softer cells underneath and it makes your skin feel slippery. Baking soda. That's a base that you commonly use in baking. Pepto-Bismol, you know, here's a really strong base, uh, easy off oven cleaner, not something you want to be exposing your skin or your lungs to. Uh, lye soap, et cetera, et cetera. So the lots of bases you'll find around the house, Alka-Seltzer. So let's take Pepto-Bismol. Why do we consume that? Well, you consume it if you have an acid stomach. So if you're getting acid reflux, that means that the pH is very low in your esophagus, and so you want to neutralize it with a base. So when you take an acid and a base together, it brings the pH closer to neutral. And so that's what this base, Pepto-Bismol, will do is it will neutralize that acid um, in your esophagus that's coming up from your stomach. So we can measure how strong or how weak an acid or a base is using the pH scale. So uh, maybe some of you are familiar with this if you had a fish tank, you know, with cute little cuddly fish like this and maybe a big chomping shark like this that's going to eat these fish. Anyway, not really. But you might have realized that to keep a healthy fish tank, you have to constantly be measuring the pH of the water. You don't want it too acidic and you don't want it too basic. If it's too basic, you might have gone to the pet store and bought something like pH down, which will... Um, is a buffer that will bring that pH back towards neutral or pH up if it's too acidic. So the pH scale is on a scale of 0 to 14. And uh, this kind of scale is kind of cute because it gives you some uh, relative examples of uh, different pHs. So in the middle, neutral is 7. So if something has a pH of 7, it's considered neutral. It's neither acidic nor basic. It's right in the middle. It's neutral. So ideally, pure water should be have a pH of 7. Now, most of the water we drink does not have a pH of 7 because it's not pure. It has other things in it. Uh, usually, drinking water might be slightly acidic, maybe like 6.5, something like that. Acid rain, though, or acid deposition of any kind can cause uh, rainwater to become highly acidic. Uh, so you, um, and not just water, you could get um, acidic snow, acidic sleet, etc. And sometimes those pHs can be down around 4. So for example, in Los Angeles, they've had a big problem with yellowing of the pine trees up on the tops of the mountains because there's so much pollution in the area that causes acid rain and acid deposition, which block the ability of those trees to undergo photosynthesis, and they start getting yellow. Um, not a good situation. Acid rain is not something you want. It, if it gets into lakes and streams, it tends to kill fish um, all at once. Um, but uh, 
the water you find in the ocean is the other way around. It's slightly basic um, because of all the salts in it. So ocean water, here you can see here, seawater, usually around 8, 8.2, 8.3, maybe as low as 7.8, but it tends to be rather basic. But other things, okay, here's our Pepto-Bismol with a pH of uh, around 10 or 9. Um, you have even eggs. The whites of your eggs are basic at about 8. Uh, wine <laughs> is down around 3-ish or so. And your sodas are also very acidic. They can be 3 or sometimes even 2, which is uh, why if you take like an iron nail and put it in your Coca-Cola, within a week or two it'll be all rusted or disintegrated. Um, even coffee is slightly acidic. Lemon juice is down here around a pH of 2, but the pH in our stomach, our gastric fluid, can be as low as a pH of 1, which is really amazing because, as we'll see later, um, some of the molecules of life, like our proteins, um, everywhere except the stomach, those proteins can't live in an acidic pH. They'll just fall apart. But the enzymes and the other proteins that are in our stomach are actually evolved to handle a low pH, which is really, really remarkable. So again, below 7, we have all the acidic things, and above 7 are the basic things. So here's your sodium hydroxide, um, can be a pH of 14. So when you're up here, these are nasty, nasty bases, and when you're down here, those are nasty, nasty acids. Here's your hydrochloric acid with a pH of 0 or, or a little bit over 0. Pretty amazing, huh? So what exactly is pH? Why do we say pH? So notice the P is lowercase and the H is uppercase. Well, really what this is is a measurement of the concentration of hydrogen ions in the solution. So remember, the more hydrogen ions in the solution, the more acidic it is. So a solution of hydrochloric acid has a lot more hydrogen ions per unit than, say, a solution of Pepto-Bismol. Um, and this is a logarithmic scale, which means that when you go from a pH of 7 to a pH of 8, it's not like one little tick mark. You're going by a factor of 10. So you're actually really making a big jump, kind of like with earthquakes, right? Like if you have an earthquake of 5 versus 6, you're going to really feel that difference because it's on a logarithmic scale. Okay, so a pH is the power of hydrogen. And it's a measurement of the hydrogen ion concentration, and you could also think of that as the hydronium ion concentration, pretty much the same thing, meaning, you know, how many hydrogen ions are packed into a certain volume um, of solution. And the more that are in there, the more acidic you're